come back to your geography class in the last chapter we <coughs> in chapter 1 we had studied about karnataka isn't it we had studied about our state karnataka the origin of our name the geographical locations and also what was the size of karnataka in today's class we will be studying about the physiographic divisions of karnataka the main learning objectives are the features of karnataka the physical divisions of karnataka the hills and peaks of karnataka we will be studying in this chapter children as we all know karnataka state is a part of a peninsular plateau this is karnataka is, is of a peninsular plateau a uh, part of a peninsular india and has a diverse uh, features the southern part consists of the undulating <coughs> photography whereas the northern has the vast land and there is a great contrast areas uh, a contrast between the coastal areas and the malnad region the land slopes uh, will sli uh, slopes slightly towards the east and uh, steeply towards the west this is a uh, where this is a tra traversed by many ridges with high valleys and gorges most of these areas of state is 450 to 900 meters above the sea level some areas are more than 1800 meters above the sea level children karnataka where it is situated can you tell me yeah karnataka is situated on the western edge of the deccan peninsula region of india it is located approximately between 11.5 degrees north and 18.5 degrees north latitudes and 74 degrees east and 78.5 degrees east longitudes Karnataka comprises the Deccan plateau the western ghats the mountain ranges and the coastal a plains physiographically karnataka is a part of two well defined regions of india one is the deccan plateau and another one is the coastal plains and the islands the state of karnataka can be divided into four physiographic landforms depending on the structure and relief it is been divided into three it is been divided into three one is the coastal plain and another one is the um, another one is the Ma malnad uh, the malnad region and the maidan region this is the coastal uh, the, uh, this is the uh, uh, coastal plain and we are having here the malnad region and here we are having the maidan region now let us move on to the coastal plains children the coastal plains of karnataka <clears throat> this is the coastal plain where you can see coastal karnataka this blue color plains of karnataka is known as kanara which is surrounded by the konkan in the north and the western ghats in the east and the arabian sea in the in the west and kerala plains in the south these plains are formed by the higher erosional platform which was created by sea in the east it is bounded by isolated hills of 300 to 1000 feet height the reorganization the result of the reorganization of the states on linguistic basis karnataka acquired the sea coast and the coastal plains as a part of its territory the coastal line extends from mangaluru in the south 
to Mangaluru in the south to Karwar in the north. Its width is 12 to 64 kilometers. It is broad in the south and it becomes steep when it comes towards the north. It is, uh, uh, its uh, height is more than 200 meters above the sea level. We are having many fast flowing rivers which cut through the coastal uh, which uh, uh, cut uh, we, we, we are having uh, sorry uh, uh, we are having uh, uh, many rivers which have been formed the estuaries and many fast flowing rivers cut through the coastal areas and it is formed by the sea erosion. The rivers have formed the estuaries and there are no deltas in this area children. Along the coastal line we are also having many ports which we can see here. So the ports are, uh, we, we, we are the ports which are being located here among it is we are uh, we, we are we, we are uh, having the we are having the Mangaluru, we are having the Batkal, Mal, um, Malpe. This is the coastal area where we are having and this is the hilly region, the, uh, the climatic conditions as we see. So we are having the Bat, uh, we, we are having the Batkal, we are having the Malpe, Ka, Karwar, Kumta, uh, Kumta, Belli Kere, Hunnavar are the fishing ports. Among that we are also having the beaches which are formed by the sea coast. And we also see that there are many, uh, it attracts the tourists and some of the important beaches are Panambur, Ullal uh, and Someshwar which is found here. Beaches near Mangaluru, Malpe, near Udupi, um, near Udupi, Karwara in the north and Murudeshwar and Murudeshwara near Honnavar and, Mar and Marvunte and Om beach near Gokarna. There are small islands which are located near the sea coast. St. Mary's Island, it is also known as a coconut island near Malpe and we are also having the Anja near uh, Karwara. Uh, near Karwar and Devgad and we are also having the uh, Kanji Kudda island are notable. So now let us uh, see about the valley there. So a transfer we, are, we see that they we are having a transverse valley there. What is a transverse valley? A transverse valley is a valley which cuts you can see here which cuts at the right angles across a ridge or in mountains a terrain valley that generally runs at right angles to the line of main mountain chain or crust. Its geomo, geomo, um, geomorphological counterpart is the longitudinal valley. The course of long valley both forms may alternate. Geologically transverse valleys frequently form a water gap where during the course of earth history the uh, erosion of a river or large stream cuts apart through a mountain or a hill range that stands tectonically uh, at right angles to it. So now what is a valley when I tell valley they, we, we also found a valley what is a valley a valley you can see this is the valley it is an elongated depression in the landscape that is formed on the action of water where it is v-shaped you can see here children all this is v-shaped not exactly v how we write in english you can see all these are in v-shape or curved by the glaciers or u-shaped two ridges uh, ridge line run from north to south connecting the peaks on either side of the valley Steep gullies and spurs run from the ridge lines to the valley bottom. 
so what i told this is the karavali we also call it as a karavali region the coastal karnataka this is north karnataka and south karnataka what we are having so physiographic divisions when we see it is been coastal malnad and maidan region it has been divided into three parts as i told you the coastal it has coastal plains coastal low plateau and coastal malnad malnad region has malnad and semi malnad malnad region is divided uh, sorry maidan region is divided into northern maidan and the southern maidan you can see here we are having the arabian see what we are having as i told you the ports which are uh, the there uh, we are having the karwar honnavar malpe uh, new mangalore all these we are having the ports which are there and we are also having here the arabian sea next we will move on to the next where we are having what i told the karwar beach you can see here here comes goa isn't it see in india map karnataka is here this is the karnataka map uh, this is the Ka karwar beach this is the bhatkal beach and we are having the marivante beach and malpe beach which is there in the coastal plain and now we are also having the uh, murdeshwara uh, the, the this one, what we tell the murdeshwara in honnavar and this is the marvante beach from uh, beach shot from the drone mm, drone and this uh, and uh, this uh, uh, this is the malpe beach this is the saint mary's uh, saint mary's island where we are having the coconut uh, where it is called as a, the coconut area also and uh, we are and uh, and we are also having the om beach this is om beach near gokarna children in gokarna and apart from and uh, we are also having the anja near karwar and this is the devagadh near the kanchin gudda islands so these are the important uh, beaches what we are having and apart from that when i told the new mangalore port we are also having the saint mary's island beautiful drone where we can see the malpe uh, malpe to udupi this is the this one and this is the saint mary's island this is the scuba diving in in the netrani island in karnataka netrani island where it is there see the netrani island the treasure in our backyard so no need to go to any other countries to see when we are having all these in our in our state only we can see all these beaches in our state only children isn't it so beautiful it is and uh, also the new mangalore port is also called as the gateway to karnataka then we we'll let us know about little bit about netrani islands netrani or the pigeon islands it is also called as a pigeon island is a tiny island located see this is the netrani island which is located off the coast of karnataka and easily accessible from goa or mumbai the islands is not very densely populated apart from being a home to numerous pigeons and wild goats netrani is a coral island and therefore and it is very suitable for snorkeling and other diving activities so many varieties of coral butterfly you can see here butterfly fish triggers Mm, uh, parrot uh, parrot fish and sh shrimps uh, make the island a diverse spot in terms of sea life see these are all the sea life animals so the island is strewn with sharp jagged rocks which only add up to its overall appeal so here we find some of the crops can you tell which is this this is a cashew godambi see this is the cashew plant what we are having then we are having the coconut 
then um, then we are having the uh, co coconut then we are having the uh, arcanet arcanet is uh, what do you tell um, adike this it is grown from the tree it is lifted after it dries it is like this then elaichi elaichi is uh, what do you tell the cardamom what do you tell yalaki then we also they grow the paddy here and paddy is also grown here these are the important crops which is grown here dakshina kannada udupi and uttara kannada are the coastal districts of karnataka see here we are having the uttara we, we are having the dakshina kannada udupi and uttara kannada uttara kannada these are the coastal regions of karnataka what we are having now now let us move on to the next part that is the malnad region this green color area what you can see this we call it as this is shown here children here this is the malnad region where do you find this malnad gr region can you tell yeah it lies in the western ghat states and it is stores as the west uh, malnad or it is also known as the land of hills here we are uh, and it is also called as the sahyadris so the malnad region it runs till run parallel so you can see it runs uh, it is also known as uh, sahyadri this is the western ghats so where it has been marked this runs parallel uh, to the coastal line from north to south you can see here the dotted lines isn't it it runs from north to south they have a steep terrace like slopes in the west and the gentle slope in the east and they are called as ghats so the length of these ghats is 650 kilometers in length and when we move to the width it is 50 to 76 kilometers then what might be the height ranges it ranges from 900 to 1500 meters from sea level the hills what do they do they are uh, they are these hills what we find they obstruct obstruct is they stop the rain bearing winds that come from arabian sea and cause heavy rainfall often more than 200 cm so the highest peak in this region we are having the muliyanagiri then uh, uh then we are also having the kudremukh and uh, kala uh, and the kalahata giri so now let us know about the muliyanagiri this is the muliyanagiri pick the muliyanagiri is a part of the baba budangiri hill ranges here it stands about 1900 uh, 30 meters tall and is the tallest peak in karnataka its height is famous mostly for watching the sunset from it is 16 kilometers from chikkamangaluru town see if you want to go whenever you go to chikkamangaluru it is very near you can go and see children 16 kilometers from Ch chikkamagaluru and driving to mulinagiri is worth taking a risk also on the way to Mm, Sithyalanagiri where the water in the Shiva temple neither increases nor decreases the road to Mulinagiri is very narrow with a view from steep cliff driving to the peak is not possible and it includes a trek up the hill from halfway point there is a temple on the top of the hill from the topmost point of the hill the arabian sea is visible on clear days the small hill log in the temple compound is the highest point in karnataka the narrow um, road to temple makes two ways traffic impossible see what a lovely place we are having in our state isn't it children now let us move on to the next uh, that is the kalahata giri the kalahata giri for uh, falls also is known as the kalahatti falls This is a magnificent natural uh, natural abode located which is 50 kilometers away from Chikkamaka Magaluru. This waterfalls is a perfect destination for le leisure mongrels and thrill seekers alike 
and is popular among both the local as well as the tourist. The fall gushes down the majestic Chandradona mountains from a height of about 400 feet. The Kalahati Falls is the first major waterfall around Chikmagaluru and easily the most distinctive one. Water drops from an overhanging ledge allowing the people to take showers beneath it. The falls contain the headwaters of the river Sharavati. Apart from being a natural gold mine, the Kalahati Falls also has a, a poignant religious significance. Uh, significance. It's, uh, ha, um, it houses the renowned Veerabhadra temple or a Veerabhadreshwara temple dedi which is dedicated to Lord Shiva. To Lord Shiva. The temple welcomes thousands of pilgrimage to its shrine throughout the year. Owing to its legendary history, the water the uh, the water from the waterfall is steep and it is uh, we can see uh, next we move on to the Kudre Mukha. It is 95 kilometers to the southwest of Chikamangaluru town is the Kudre Mukha range in Kannada Kudre is a horse and Mukha is face. So it is named because of the unique shape of the Kudre Mukha peak overlooking the Arabian Sea. The broad hills are chained to one another. You can see here it is like a chain to one another with a deep valley and steep precipice. Situated at 1894.3 meters above the sea level. Here Kudre Muk is also rich in the deposits like iron ore and the iron ore company conducts mining operation, benefication and transportation of the ore as the slurry through pipelines to the port of Panambur near, near Mangalore. Then we are also having the Rudragiri is a mountain in India with an eleva elevation of 1745 meters and the prominence of we are have, and the prominence of 117 meters in the western Ghats where what we are having we can see here. And we are also having the Devaramana Durga. All these, uh, we are also having the Balarayana Durga. The Bandje Falls trek is a combination of two, uh, two treks. One is the Balala Rayana Durga and Bandeja Arbi. Because many do not know, they can go all the way to Bandeja waterfalls when we say the ba Balala Rayana Durga trek. So, Arabi in local language means waterfalls and hence the, hence the words Bandeje uh, Arbi, Bandeje Arbi falls are usually interchangeable. So, this is also used for trekking and uh, the, there, was, there is also a fort from the 17th century at its peak and a glushing waterfall in the end. Watching the waterfall is the snoot where it falls from 1000 meters feet which it falls. Next we are having the Merti um, Gudda. Uh, uh, Merti Gudda is also located in Karnataka and the elevation is 1346 and variants of spellings for Merti Gudda also in other languages they call it as Merti Parvata, Merti Gudda. Meriti Gudda, Meriti Parvata, what, what we call in different languages. Then we are also having the Kodachadri uh, uh, Trekka. Kodachadri is a mountain peak. You can see here, this is all the, at the back, all these are the Kodachadri hills and with a dense forest and it is the elevation of 1343 meters above the sea level in the western Ghats or in south India. And it is 78 kilometers from Shumaga and it is declared as a natural heritage site of the Karna by the Karnataka government and it is the 13th highest peak of Karnataka. Next we are having the Pushpagiri. Pushpagiri we also we call it as Kumara Parvata. Here you can see Kumara Parvata. 
and uh, and uh, it is the highest peak in pushpagiri wildlife sanctuary in the western ghats of karnataka it is located in the somvar pet taluk which is 20 kilometers from somvar pet in the northern part of kodugu district on the border between the dakshina kannada and kodugu district and hasan district it is the fourth highest peak of Karnataka. The Sanskrit name of this mountain is Pushpagiri, while its Prakrut form is Pushpagiri, which is mentioned in the Naga, Nagarjuna Konda second apicidal temple inscription. And uh, this may refer to the different mountains to the north of Kudupa in Andhra Pradesh. Then we, I told about the Mulyanagiri, which is the highest peak here. The Chandradurna, see this is the highest peak where you can see. What a beautiful places all these are, isn't it? Once when you get a chance to see, please visit all these places, children. Next, we are, we are next, the routes from the eastern plains of Karnataka to the coastal plains across the western Ghats are called as the mountain passes. So the important mountain passes when we tell we are having the Charmudi Ghat. The Charmudi Ghat is a ghat in the Belatangadi, Belatangadi Taluk of Dakshina Kannada and Mundargita and the Mudugiri Taluk of Chikkamangaluru. It is one of the west, uh, points of western ghats. You can see here children how the roads are. And uh, this is the Masum beauty what we are having. The the section of Ghat is known as Charmudi Ghat. It lies on the National Highway 73 which connects Mangaluru to Tumkuru. The nearest places are Charmudi village, Ujjiri, Belatangadi, Putturu, Kotkegera, Balluru and Kalsala estate and Bankan. So Ghat, Ghat, uh, Ghat is Charmodi, is a Ghat in the Bellatangri Taluk of Dakshina Kannada and Madhugiri ta and uh, the Mudugiri Taluk of Chikamangalur. It is one of the point in the western Ghats through its more motorable road passes connecting the Dakshina Kannada and uh, Chikamangaluru. It lies on the National Highway of 73 kilo. National Highway 73. Then we are having the Shirhatti Ghat. The Shirhatti Ghat is a Shirhatti is a village we on NH 48, which runs from Meng Mangaluru to Bengaluru. That is from it links Hasan Sakleshpura also, uh, which it move, moves. Next we are having the Agumbe Ghat. This is the Agumbe Ghat. See this. This one is also Agombe Ghat. The Agombe Ghat, it links Shumagga and Udupi. Uh, and this is also one of the famous uh, uh, rainforest conservation efforts. Uh, we are also having the medicinal plants and also it is a tourism and also trucking also takes place. And there is also a Agombe Rainforest Research Station which was established as a sanctuary of King Cobra in Agombe's flash, um, sorry, flag uh, ship spices. Then we are having the Hulikal, the Hulikal uh, Ghat which connects links Shumagga and Kundapura. Then we are also apart from that the Malnad region receives uh, uh, the, the Malnad region it uh, receives heavy rainfall. It also attracts the hill resorts covered with dense evergreen forest uh, uh, and uh, it is a birthplace of many rivers and they are also fast. Uh, down and steep slopes from wonderful waterfalls. The Jok Falls, Sharavati River is the highest waterfall uh, and uh, we are also having uh, the, um, uh, apart from that we are also having the uh, waterfalls at Unchali, Magod, Gokak, Shivana Sabudra and Abe Falls what we are having. All these are Sharavati River, this is the Magadha, Shivana Samudra waterfalls what we are having in our state and this is the Gokak Falls what we are having and the 
when we move on to the crops uh, children these valleys coffee tea rubber plantation and spices are grown here and also it is also called as the land of coffee the kodugu district is known as kashmiri of karnataka because of its cool weather and also we can see the spices are also grown here like uh, what you tell uh, the or oh, in kannada what do you tell palavele uh then we are having the uh, this is a bay leaf what we call this is the cloves uh, lavanga uh, yeah then we are having the uh, yalaki that is the uh, elaichi what we are having and we are also having the chakke the uh, chakke menusu that is the pepper all these are grown in these areas kurg it is kurg it is famous for uh kurg orange is famous for uh, uh it's very famous and it is also tasty it is a man made hybrid of mandarin with greenish yellow color and sweet so taste known for longer shelf life compared to other varieties so in the next class children we will move on to the maidan region thank you children